It's time for cauliflower. Let's ferment it. We'll do it Szechuan style with some spice. Let's also talk about the benefits of fermenting. Those good bacteria are a big deal. Okay, so what I've done is I have taken my cauliflower and I've cut it into florets. We are gonna make a spicy Sichuan style pickle and we're gonna use cauliflower. And so if you are into spicy, this is a really great recipe. Uh, it is fermented, but it's fermented in a traditional Chinese style, which is quite different than any other ferment that I've ever seen. I've been tinkering around with this and it's pretty great. Um, you'll be surprised at some of these ingredients. So first, we need this special fermentation jar. You probably don't need this. You could probably use whatever you got. But these are cool because there's this top and you put water in here and it actually it seals it, right? And that's how you ferment the jar. Now in China, um, when they do these, they actually leave the brine in here for literally years. Years and years and years. And they just keep adding and adding and adding. And the key, of course, is to make sure that no erroneous bacteria get into the jar and contaminate it, grow mold, get all kinds of icky. So they only pull pickles out of this with clean utensils, chopsticks in this case, but no dirty fingers in the jar, right? So I'm gonna put my cauliflower in here and get it all nice and full. And it makes sense why they would use chopsticks, right? Because it's such a narrow mouth. Like there's no way you're gonna be able to get like a, I guess you get a fork in there, but you need kind of a long fork to reach the cauliflower down in the bottom. So there's our cauliflower. And now we're going to add our water. But first, if we haven't met, I'm Heather. I used a food as medicine approach to heal my body of all kinds of crazy stuff, and now I help others as a functional nutritionist, and I'm an urban homesteader sharing all things food on this channel. Let's ferment this sucker. So we're going to add water. So I need to keep track of how many cups of water go in here because that's going to affect how much salt and how much of some other ingredients we put in here as well. So I'm going to get a liquid measure. So. So I'm going to fill this up with filtered water. Um, we have a whole house filtration system from Aquasana and we have RO. So I'm going to use RO. This is a two cup liquid measuring cup. So we're going to start here and see where we get. So there's two cups. Another two cups. And now, the most important ingredient, right? Salt. So for this recipe, we do about a quarter tablespoon of salt per one cup of water. It took about eight cups of water to get this sucker full, so we're gonna do uh, two tablespoons. And if my math is wrong, my math is wrong. So <laughs> let's see. So we're gonna do two. One, Two. And I actually don't dissolve it ahead of time. I'm a lazy fermenter like that. I just kind of get it in there and uh, find my clean chopsticks. And get all nice and mixed up. So if you just want to ferment it like this, you can legit ferment it like this. You don't even need to season it, right? Because when it comes to lacto-fermentation, it really is just salt, water, and whatever item you are fermenting. So since we're fermenting, let's talk about the health benefits of fermentation, because they're pretty miraculous, right? And it all really centers around bacteria, uh, those little bugs. And those little bugs are quite powerful. So they are probiotics, so beneficial bacteria. And when we eat fermented foods, we are helping to colonize our gut of probiotics and healthy bacteria. Now what's cool is if you can keep a good sized colony of good guys, they actually crowd out the bad guys. Because there's a lot of bacteria that live in our gut that are actually opportunistic. Uh, and not just bacteria, also fungus, right? Candida is in there. 
normal stuff that lives in the gut on the regular basis, but if things get out of balance, the opportunistic guys can overgrow. They can lead to inflammation of the gut, they can lead to autoimmunity, they can lead to issues with the integrity of the mucosal membrane, so things can start to leak out and like chronically overactivate that immune system. All kinds of things can happen if you end up with an imbalance of your gut microbes. So fermented foods are fantastic because they're a naturally occurring source of a broad spectrum of probiotics. Um, and there's lots of, lots of probiotics out there, right? Like you can easily take a probiotic in pill form. That's definitely an option. Uh, the literature does indicate that you need to rotate those on a three month basis. Otherwise they kind of stop with their beneficial effects. And I think it's because every time we take probiotics in a pill, it's a very standard set of bacteria, right? But when you are eating a fermented food, it's a broad spectrum and it's naturally balanced in terms of the types of bacteria that you're getting. It's not just the lactobacillus, the bacillus, the bifidobacteria, the big three that we're used to. Uh, but speaking of the big three, these guys actually do produce your neurotransmitters. So if you're ever feeling blue, anxious, depressed, can't sleep, get some fermented foods in and see if that helps at all. So um, lactobacillus is actually responsible for making serotonin, which is one of our feel-good hormones. Bacillus is responsible for making dopamine, which is another very happy brain chemical. And then um, bifidobacteria is responsible for making GABA, and GABA is necessary to kind of calm things down watch out for anxiety, help you sleep. Um, and then the other thing that's interesting is that melatonin is also made in the gut. So if your bacteria are imbalanced in the gut, you could actually reduce the amount of melatonin you're creating and it makes it difficult to sleep. A good chunk of melatonin is made in the pineal gland in the brain, but a really big part of it is also made in the gut. So, so far we've got keeping your gut microbes balanced, keeping the good guys at bay, helping you sleep, improving your mental health, and there's a heck of a lot more to come, right? But first, let's add a few more ingredients to our pot. So we need um, sugar, right? Sugar is gonna be some of the food for some of the bacteria that are in here. There's naturally occurring sugar in the cauliflower and so you can just leave it there. But this recipe does call for uh, rock sugar, which is what's traditionally used in China, but you can use any kind of sugar. I think I actually have some rock sugar. So let's see. I do, I have some rock sugar. So, you can add however much of this you think is appropriate. I think the recipe actually calls for a quarter cup, but I am a little bit of a rebel and I just kind of throw in what I think is appropriate. So, rock sugar, but again, you can use regular sugar. So either a quarter cup of rock sugar or um, regular sugar, whatever looks good to you. Get those guys in there, okay? And then we need Szechuan peppercorns and Szechuan chili flakes. And we are going to need a clean teaspoon, tablespoon for this. So let's do one tablespoon of each. So I have Szechuan chili flakes. So we're going to do one tablespoon. Now this crap is spicy, so if you are not down with the hotness, either skip this or cut down on the amount based on your preference. The first time I made this recipe, I overdid it and I blew my face off, so be careful. Oh, and then we have Szechuan peppercorns, and these are kind of cool. They're like a, um, I don't know, kind of a purpley peppercorn. We're gonna do a tablespoon of those. Get this all mixed in. So another cool fact about probiotics is that they are in fact responsible for also producing a lot of your immune cells. So when people say that uh, good bacteria, gut health is really responsible for a strong immune system, it's because these are the bugs that create those immune cells. And so the stronger your gut, the stronger your immune system. It's also the case that the cell wall of your gut is only one cell thick. So your mucosal membrane of your gut, like think your hose wall, is only one cell thick, which means it's very, very easy for things to kind of pass through that wall if it's not in good shape. And so when they talk about how 
I've heard numbers from like 75 to 90 percent of your immune system lives in your gut. It's those two things. One, those bugs are responsible for creating your immune cells, and two, most of your immune cells hang around your gut, protecting and kind of guarding that mucosal membrane because it's only one cell thick and it's very easy to compromise. Each individual bacteria also has a little bit of a superpower. So one that comes to mind is Acromantia. Acromantia is a bacteria that kind of safeguards the mucosal membrane itself. So there's something called mucin that actually kind of breaks down the integrity of that mucosal membrane, and Acromantia is a bacteria that breaks down mucin. So if that Acromantia goes missing, your gut wall becomes at risk because there isn't anybody there to break down that mucin. As the mucin builds up, the gut breaks down. And so that's just one of many bacteria that have kind of superpowers in the gut. So very, very important is why we have fermented foods and we don't just rely on supplemental probiotics, right? Okay, what's next? So we're gonna throw some fresh garlic in here. This recipe also calls for fresh ginger, but I don't have any, so we're just gonna go with garlic, right? And I'm a cheater. I'm gonna use the already put together stuff. And it calls for one tablespoon. But I'm gonna do two. garlic in there. Now for those of you that are kind of afraid of eating cauliflower, broccoli, cabbage, a lot of the sulfurous brassica and cruciferous vegetables because you get a little gassy, maybe you get a little bit of a tummy ache. Another amazing benefit of fermenting them is it actually kind of pre-digests things. It breaks down the structure and makes things a little bit easier to digest and so it'll cut down on those unpleasant GI interactions when you go to eat cauliflower, broccoli, and brussels, and cabbage, and all of those guys that can be a little bit hard on the digestive tract if you have a sensitive tummy. It also makes all of the nutrients more bioavailable because it breaks things down into their individual structures and so it's much easier to absorb the nutrients when things are kind of pre-digested or fermented ahead of time for you. Another cool thing about um, fermentation is that the good bugs actually create vitamins. So they make like the B vitamins and everything a lot more bioavailable, but they also create byproducts. And some of those byproducts are enzymes and they add nutrition to the food that wouldn't normally be there anyway. One that comes to mind that we utilize a lot in the alternative cancer world is indol 3 carbonyl indol 3 carbonyl is, it's a, an enzyme that is created when you ferment brassicas. Um, sauerkraut is a really good example. So indol 3 carbonyl is kind of the byproduct of fermenta fermenting a brassica like cabbage. And when, what this does for us is it actually optimizes your estrogen pathways. So it's used a lot when we're dealing with any kind of an estrogen driven cancer in the alternative treatment world. It helps with estrogen dominance. It helps with anything excess estrogen. It essentially helps to optimize those estrogen pathways to break down excess estrogen because if you can't break it down and eliminate it, it just kind of recycles in your system and makes things worse and worse. And so indol 3 carbonyl is a wonderful byproduct of sauerkraut. So if you like sauerkraut, definitely get on the ball with sauerkraut. It's a wonderful fermented food and it goes great with everything. I put sauerkraut on like everything savory, on top of meat, on top of anything and everything. I even have a recipe on my website where I put Dijon mustard and sauerkraut on shrimp. And like, it's an unlikely combination, but it was so delicious. So sauerkraut is great for those added enzymes and benefits that you wouldn't normally get just by eating them by themselves when you ferment them. Another benefit of probiotics is that um, they kind of detoxify the food. So uh, plants in general have defense mechanisms. Now they don't have teeth, they don't have claws, what they have is chemical warfare. 
And so there are chemicals in plants that are designed to protect the plant from being eaten. These are oftentimes called anti-nutrients. These are nutrients that bind to minerals that we need and make them so that we can't absorb them, basically lock up a lot of the nutrition that's in the plant. And they can be reactive for some people. Some folks can feel really not so good when they eat these plant chemicals. One example is phytates or phytic acid. We talked about this in my sourdough video. When it comes to phytic acid, it's really, really, really inflammatory for a lot of folks. And when you ferment down the um, food that contains phytic acid, it actually breaks it down and then it's no longer problematic for a lot of folks. If you're super, super sensitive, you may still have issues, but for the most part, you'll be able to eat a food and tolerate it with no problem if you ferment it ahead of time. If you're sensitive to things like phytates, lectins are another one, and the list kind of goes on. There's lots of phytochemicals that can be problematic for folks that are taken care of when you just ferment the food. And some of the last magic powers of fermented foods is there's actually a positive correlation between people who eat a lot of fermented foods and reduced risk of cancer, reduced risk of cardiovascular disease, reduced risk of metabolic disease. And it's partially because of that immune system strengthening that we talked about a minute ago, but it's also because of the reduced inflammation. So this part's a little complex, but when you have a mismatch of microbes in the gut, or you have a compromised gut lining, you oftentimes have inflammation, chronic systemic inflammation that won't go away. So if you deal with joint aches and pains and headaches and just kind of brain fog and fatigue and all of these things, it might be because you're inflamed. And that inflammation might route back to the gut. And an imbalance in microbiome, an imbalance in the mucosal membrane, just some sort of dysfunction in the gut. And these guys can help restore a lot of that function. And it has been shown in the literature that when people eat a lot of fermented foods, they tend to also have a lower incidence of chronic illness, particularly metabolic syndrome. And metabolic syndrome is now being linked to anything and everything you can think of from diabetes to autoimmunity to cancer. So these little bugs that are gonna grow in here are a really big deal. So how does this pot ferment? Well. This next ingredient is an unlikely character. We're gonna actually put alcohol in here. So the Chinese use grain alcohol. I'm using whiskey, in this case, scotch, because I don't have any vodka. I used it all to make vanilla. I used all my bourbon to make vanilla. And so now, ugh, we've got whiskey. So the recipe calls for about half a tablespoon per cup of water. So I'm gonna do, what do I have? I have eight cups in here, half of a tablespoon per cup, two, four, six, eight. That's four tablespoons of whiskey. And hopefully my math is accurate. Two, three, four, and this really just kind of helps seal the top. And don't mix it here, don't mix it at all. Instead, we're just going to fill the water up here in the top and then place this guy on top and that's gonna seal it. So it's gonna be a combination of the uh, seal from the water and also that grain alcohol on top. Now with this guy, you gotta be careful not to overfill it because when you put this on the top, you can actually get a bit of an avalanche. And there you have it. This guy is going to sit and ferment and I'm just gonna check on him every couple of days and see where we're at. Depending on your environment, it's gonna ferment faster or slower. I'm in a warm climate, I'm here in Arizona and so things tend to over ferment for me so I really gotta watch them and I'm terrible about watching them. So hopefully I can get to this cauliflower before things get too crazy. And if you want more information about the health benefits of probiotics, my friend Anna over at the Fermented Homestead is doing a pretty cool giveaway. She's actually giving away two copies of The Art of Fermentation. This is a giant Bible of all things fermenting. I love this book, it's fantastic. The author of this book actually lives with HIV 
and he talks all about the health benefits of using fermented foods to keep his immune system strong and that virus at bay. And so that is a pretty amazing testimony to fermented foods in and of itself. So make sure that you go and like and comment on every single video in this collaboration for Fermented February and attend the lives over at the Fermented Homestead to make sure that you are entered to win a copy of this. This is really great. This is also being sponsored by Haas Tools and they are helping Anna to give away a fermentation kit and a bunch of other goodies and it's really, really awesome. If you're not aware of Haas Tools, they're a seed company, they're family owned, they're fantastic. I use their seeds. I get a pretty high germination rate on their seeds, and so far they've been of the most wonderful quality ever. I love them, and I'm super excited to see them participate in this collaboration. So, if you want more recipes like this, check out everybody in the collab. Everybody will be linked below, and come back and tell me how you liked the Szechuan cauliflower if you made it yourself. Hopefully not too spicy. Thank you so much. Remember, food is love, but real food is medicine. So make sure and nourish all of those you love every day.